Um, okay, so uh, let me erase this one for now. So we're going to do uh, this one first. So um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to draw a picture, right? So we have, uh, so first let's draw x equals y squared. So what does that look like? So x equals y squared looks like that, right? So that's x equals y squared. And then x equals y looks like that, right? So this is x equals y. OK, so then what's the region that I'm looking at? It's this part right here, right? OK, so at this point, it's probably a good idea to <coughs> erase the uh, part that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to erase this so it doesn't clutter up all my other stuff that I'm going to be uh, doing here. And uh, just have the, the region. OK. Uh, the next thing is uh, we want to uh, draw the line that represents the axis of rotation. So in this case, we're going to rotate it about y equals to minus 1, right? which is, so if it, this is to scale, what's this intersection point right here? It's not really to scale, well, that's not bad. What, is, what point is that? Where do they intersect? One, one. one, one, right? So that's not, e that's not hard to see that. So, okay, so then roughly about here, minus one. So I'm going to rotate uh, that region about that line, um, that blue dotted line. So far so good? Okay, all right. So <coughs> uh, what is it going to look like? So what you want to do is take this region and you want to mirror it across that dotted line. So see this distance right? So here, let me draw this real quick. So do you see this distance from here to here? So from the axis of rotation to the first part of the region, you should have that same exact distance on the other side. So I need to have that same distance from here to here. So this point, this point, like x marks the spot here, corresponds to that point, x marks the spot there. Does that make sense? OK, so I'll erase the x's because they're just clutter. But uh, then from there, what do I want to do? Well, uh, let's draw maybe the straight line here and then uh, the bump looks like, well, that's not very good. Just making sure you guys are paying attention. So it's a mirror image, right? So notice it's the, the straight line first and then the, the bump, right? Does that make sense? You with me? OK, so now um, to make this a little bit more three dimensional, you can maybe go something like this, let's say. So you can draw the circle part if you want. So something like that. And again, this is just more for kind of sanity. Uh, but it should look symmetric when you draw it, uh, roughly, right? So uh, what, is that, what does that look like? What shape is that? Well, it's not really a bowl because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the bottom doesn't have a, gr a floor so the, the, uh, the food would just fall out, right? Because it's got a big hole in the middle. <laughs> a what? Oh, yeah, like a lamp. Exact. It's kind of like, well, sort of like a lamp shade, right? Ish. A little. <laughs> like a a little bit like a lampshade, right? So it's open on both ends, right? Um, okay, so I'm going with lampshade. All right, so uh, once we have the picture, um, then what you want to do, remember, is you want to take a cross-section. Uh, now, how am I going to take the cross-section? Is it going to be a vertical cross-section or is it going to be a horizontal cross-section? Okay, should there be any ambiguity about whether it's one or the other? 
Absolutely not. No. So all it is, it's not hard to figure out what it is because it's the same as see these circles that I drew right here. So it's it's the same as those circles. So it's going to be vertical. So if I draw the cross section, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a circle like that. And notice it has a hole, right? So maybe I'll do a different color here. So something like that, maybe. And this is the region in here. So. Okay, so if I draw it over here on the side, it's going to look like this. That's the outer. The green is the inner, and then that's the uh, cross section. Okay, so does that make sense? So the red is the outer, the green's the inner, um, and okay, so. Um, let's see here. All right, so now, next, uh, probably before we even do this, actually, um, what are we going to integrate with respect to? Integrate with respect to x. Okay, why? Right, so if you look at the cross section, notice that to collect the volume, we're going to be going along the horizontal axis, right? So we're going to start here at zero, and then it's going to go like a, like a three-dimensional scanner almost, and it's collecting the volume. Uh, the other way to see it, remember, is if you think of, so this is your cross section, right? Remember that, um, so that when we kind of looked at this, we said, okay, well, these are three-dimensional disks, right? And the volume of this disk is um, the area of the uh, cross-section times the width, right? Which is, in this case, delta x, because it's standing up, right? So that delta x, when you turn it into the sum, is turns into dx in the integral, right? OK. So this is really important. Why? Because that means that everything, when you find the radius, it has to be in terms of x. So that's why you want to know that ahead of time. OK, so um, all right, so now let's find the radius. So we'll call this, so this is capital R. So the big radius, what is, what is uh, the big radius? So let me erase this here so that I can write. OK, so the big radius, notice, is the distance from here to here, right? You guys agree? That red line that I just drew? OK. So very important. So uh, right here, uh, no, not green. Uh, OK, so notice what, so from the x-axis to the uh, graph, the edge of the graph, what, what is that? That's y, which is equal to square root of x, right? That's the y value of this function right here, right? y equals square root of x in this case. Does that make sense? OK. No. <coughs> OK, and then. What is this distance right here? That's the number one, right? How do I know that? Well, it's that's at y equals minus one, right? So the, that distance is uh, one. Okay. So then, what's the big? What's capital R then? It's going to be square root of x plus one. Do you guys see that? Okay. So any questions with that before we keep going? Does that make sense? How, how you look at it, how you look at the graph and um, decide, you know, so you take the function, make sure you pick the right one, right? Why is it that we picked square root of x instead of x equals y? 
No, why is it that we pick this function instead of that one? Yeah, it's the outer function, exactly, right? So right here, this one, the red, uh, the radius, the red radius that I drew, it's the one that touches x equals y squared or y equals square root of x, right? Okay, so then what about uh, the green radius, which we'll call little r? So notice it's exactly the same thing, right? Except... This time, though, what is this little distance here? That's just x, right? And then, so then the whole thing is going to be 1 plus x, or x plus 1, right? Does that make sense? So it's, so that's the function y equals x. Um, so that's a green function? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah? You with me? Okay, so then once we have uh, both of those, then, then we're good to go. Because then we say, okay, well, what's the area of the cross section? It's going to be pi square root of x plus 1 quantity squared minus x plus 1 quantity squared, right? Okay, so then that means that the volume is going to equal to, so it's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 up to n, right? Of what goes inside the sum? So the line above, right? The cross section, the area of the cross section. So uh, square root of x plus 1 squared minus x plus 1 squared. And then that, what do I do with the area of the cross section to get the volume? Mm -mm. No, before. What am I missing? That's not a Riemann sum. Times delta, times delta x, yep. All right, so what I wrote, had written down earlier, that's the area of, area of the cross section. I need the volume, which is, so you just multiply it by delta x, right? So then if you let n go to infinity, that's a Riemann sum, which is equal to the integral, right, uh, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Oh, and don't forget your i's over up here. Sorry about that. Um, of square root of x plus 1 quantity squared minus x plus 1 squared dx. Yep, don't forget the pi in front as well. Okay. So, uh, you guys should do it, but uh, we're going to be a little bit lazy and ask Wolfram to do it for us. That's what you got? Yeah. Oh, and then what, what about the integral from 0 to 1? Oh, are you sure? <laughs> 5 times the integral, da, 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 minus x plus 1. Well, you guys should do it by hand and then um, compare it to what Wolfram tells us. That's a good plan. All right, what does Wolfram say? Pi over 2. Is that what you said? Nice. Strong work. Okay. So what is pi over 2? That's the volume of the lampshade. Right? Okay, questions? Can we what? Can we? Well, I don't want to do it just because then it gives us more time to do more setting up problems, which I think is harder. Don't you guys think? 
Or would you guys want? Do you guys want to do it? Are you guys dying to do it? Just this one. Just this one. Just this one. Okay, just this one. All right. Oh. Hello. My pen died. died all right let's see here so so what do we get so first you expand this right so square root of x plus 1 squared is going to be x plus 2 root x plus 1 right minus x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx So far, so good. Uh, so then we combine like terms. Let's see. What can we? Uh, the x minus 2x. So we can combine those, right? I guess let's put them in order. So I'm going to have minus x squared uh, minus 1x, right? And then plus 2 root x. And then what else? That's it, right? Because 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, so then, what, whoa, wowzers. Okay, so then what do I get? So I have pi uh, times, if you integrate this, you get x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus. Oh, negative x cubed over 3, yes, sorry. Uh, plus, how many x's? x to the 3 halves times 4 thirds from 0 to 1, right? So notice when you plug in 0, everything cancels out. So you end up with pi times minus 1 third minus 1 half plus 4 thirds, which is pi over 2. Okay, so why don't you guys try the other one? Okay, so um, this is what it looks like, right? So the same thing except we're rotating about x equals minus 1. So if I draw the picture here, so I didn't do a very good job. Look at that. Terrible job. Okay, so you'll have to use your imagination. Okay, so imagine I drew that correctly. And it's going to look like that, right? This will be a good example to show you that you don't need to draw an awesome picture to get it right. So the most important thing that you draw well is the act, the region itself, the um, whatever it is that you're rotating, because that's the most important thing, because that's what you're going to use to um, draw the radius lines. So that's the part that really needs to be uh, really well done. So if I do that here, if I draw my cross section, so just in keeping with the theme, uh, red for outer and green for inner, and yellow for the inside. All right, so first off, what do you notice? So what am I going to integrate with respect to? But why, why? So you're moving along the the vertical axis, right? So, um, and notice if I were to give this thickness here, it would be a delta y, right? So, all right, so that's important. Now, um, so let's do, let's draw our cross section over here. So I've got the red, I've got the green, got my yellow inside here. Okay, so, uh, this is big R, which corresponds to this distance right here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's big R right there. So those two are the same. So what is that, the length of that line, that red line that I drew? 
Uh, y plus 1. That is correct. Y plus 1. Uh, how do I know that? Well, what's the, what function is it touching? It's touching this function, which is x equals to y, right? So uh, that function, when, when I plug it in, gives me this distance right here, right? That much. And then I want to add 1 to it. When I add those two, I get 1 plus y, and that's the, uh, the big radius. And notice it's the same throughout, right? Okay, now, um, so one, 1 plus 1. What about the uh, small radius? So the small radius is this distance, right? Which is that distance from there to there. So little r is going to be how many? Uh, y squared plus 1. Yes, because it's touching this function right here, which is x equals y squared. And notice both of these are with respect to uh, y, right? And why did we know to keep them that way? Because we decided from the very beginning we're going to integrate with respect to y. That's why you want to ask yourself that from the beginning so that you know what variables you should have. Otherwise, you start getting confused. You're like, oh, I don't know. Um, so, so it's important to decide what you're going to integrate with respect to from the beginning. Yeah. Um, okay, so then once we have that, then we're... We're pretty much good to go here. Um, so we have the area of the cross section. What is that going to be? It's pi times. One plus y yep, one plus y squared, and then y squared plus one squared, right? So subtract the outer minus the inner circle, right? Um, so then the volume is going to be equal to. Uh, the sum from i equals 1 to infinity. You can put the pi on the outside and then 1 plus y quantity squared minus y squared plus 1 squared times delta y, right? Yeah, so that's just an alternative notation. Instead of doing the limit, it then goes to infinity and then from 1 to n, you can just go from 1 to infinity. But it means exactly the same thing. I just anticipated needing the space. Um, okay, and then what is this equal to? This is equal to pi times the integral. Of 1 plus y squared minus y squared plus 1 squared dy from y equals 0 to y equals 1, right? No, uh, I put it because um, I want to make sure that it's not ambiguous for you guys, especially in the beginning, um, because we've kind of been mixing and matching, and so sometimes it get, can get confusing. So um, I write them down, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to, because yeah. uh, it should be obvious. What you, the only thing you can't have is uh, mix, mix and match, you know. So that's the main thing. You don't want to mix and match. Um, all right, so if we do that, then let's let's see here. So what do I get? The volume is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of, so what is that going to be? If I expand that, I get 1 plus 2y squared plus y to the fourth, right? Minus y to the fourth minus 2y squared minus 1 uh, dy. So this is pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, y to the fourths cancel, right? 2y squareds cancel. What? Oh, yeah, that's why. Okay, sorry about that. I was like, uh, it's 0. <laughs> there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing there. Now, I put th this shouldn't have had a squared right here. See that? So that was my that was my mistake. All right, so let's erase. See, that's what happens when you go fast. See, 
When you go too fast, you make mistakes like that. Um, okay, so 1 plus 2y plus y squared. Um, All right, so the ones cancel, right? Uh, let's see, and then y squared minus two y squared. So then I end up with m minus y to the fourth minus y squared plus two y dy. So this is equal to pi times so I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to skip the so the antiderivative, you get it, but then you plug in from 0 to 1, so really you only plug in 1, right? So you end up with minus 1 fifth minus a third plus 1, right? Nope. Nope. Because you plug in 1 first. So you plug in one first, right? Oh, yeah. So then what is that? Seven pi over fifteen. Yep. Sound good? Any questions with that? No? Okay. Um,